In this video, we want to continue implementing our chat server, uh, hopefully get it to the point where we can actually test it and see how it works along with our chat client. So we have a simple bit of code here that when the user inputs something, that message should be sent out to everyone else. Um, and what we're missing is that when a new connection comes in, we get their socket, we get their input stream and their output stream, but we need to ask them their name so that we can add them to our map of users and build a user for them. But as we discussed before, we can't do this just inside of that thread. So this is a place for another future where we can say <clears throat> out.println what is your name? Okay. And then we will, because we're in a separate future, we can just say val name equals in dot read line. Now read line is a blocking call. So that's just going to sit there until we get input. But that's why we're doing this in, in a future. We would have to do something to wait. We can't keep going. We can't build the user until we have we have their name. Um, and I'm happy blocking here. Technically, I probably shouldn't block my future. I should probably have it. So this future then does a for each when it comes back with the result. But I'm, I'm happy here. So I get the name. At this point, I can build a new user. It is a user of name sock in out and I can add that onto the users. There is a proviso here. And that is that what if that name was already taken? Okay, the proper way to do this would actually have this code inside of a while loop and if they entered a name that was already in use, we would <clears throat> ask them, say, we would tell them that name is already in use, please pick another one. And they would sit here in a little loop um, until they had picked something that, that wasn't in use. Currently, we're not worrying about that. Okay, so the check connections will sit here and accept over and over again, and for each one it will ask them their name. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. So we run our server, and then we'll run the chat client. It asks, what is your name? I'll say mark and you know we got no response to that it might actually be nice to have the chat server uh, you know tell them welcome something like that uh, possibly show them older chats there there are lots of functionality things that we could add in there but we can send a test message and indeed it comes back to us so that was one of the reasons why I didn't want to exclude the current chatter from from their message because it's good feedback for us. We could actually run this again. And that user could chat something and we could go back to this other one. Ah, um, that is not the right name and I know why that is happening. That is because our loop down here, we used name again which is hiding, uh, actually, so it doesn't matter what I call it, I actually want to do user.name because uh, user is the one who gave us input, and so I want to send their name. Okay, so that was a, a little bug. Um, there are other things that could be cleaned up in here. Personally, I would like it if we got little prompts so every time that we get an input from the user, we could print out to them, not a print line, just a regular print of a greater than followed by the uh, space so that they we have a little prompt that we can see. Um, an interesting thing about the way that this was implemented is that this was written using our client does just plain text. And so assuming that everything's happy here, it should be possible to communicate with this using Telnet. So Telnet literally does exactly what our client does. It opens a socket to some location 
a computer and a port number and then starts doing text communication back and forth. And that's what we had our client do. So note that when I do this, it says, what is your name? We connect to the server, the server sent us something. Uh, this will be Bob and Bob is going to say, hi there. Now we still have this bug. It's showing the wrong name. So Mark, when we're on user that uh, was named Mark, we see Mark. When we're on the user that says Lewis, we see Lewis because everyone is getting their own name instead of the name of the person who chatted. But other than that bug, you can see that now we almost didn't even have to write a chat client. I did it because I wanted to show you how we would use the socketing of and how we could write this code. But this server is written in such a way that it can actually communicate with a basic uh, telnet, which is actually one of the things that um, I strive for because some of my student assignments, <laughs> we do still have that little bug there. Uh, have to think about why our client is on quit going through and, and getting an infinite set of, of nulls. One thing that implies is that this loop, oh no, it's that it's the read line in here for some reason, this future isn't dying when we close the the socket. Um, well, var stopped equals false while not stopped stopped equals true. That is. Um, an interesting issue. I was expecting that when our main thread finished it would kill the future but something about this is keeping that future alive and so it winds up printing these things out. Now this looks like a bit of a race condition. I have a mutable piece of data here. Uh, I mutate it in in this thread and I'm checking it in this thread. It's one of these race conditions that does not affect or cause a, uh, doesn't affect our program, does not cause it to have invalid behavior because the only thing this ever gets set to is true. And if the while loop happens to miss a true on one pass, it will get it on the other. Um, I guess we could also do something like if P is not equal to null here so that we don't print out the nulls that we had. Um, Okay, that's one of those phantom errors that's not really there. So there are other things I've mentioned that you could add to this uh, to make sure you understand what's going on with this chat, chat server. I would recommend it. One is private messages. So in do chat, you could check input to see if it matches something like a username colon or whatever you want to use as syntax for your private messages. And if that happens, it would be another case here so it doesn't go out to everyone. It just looks up that name in the in the hash map and sends a message just to them. Um, turns out you can also play with things inside of the Scala.console. You can do color coding, so you can actually make your private messages one color and your regular messages a different color if you wanted. Um, I do like the idea of having prompts on this so that when the user uh, is, is sitting there waiting and knowing that they need to type something in, there's actually a prompt that tells them that it's waiting for it. So there's more stuff that you can play with, but we've basically written a functional uh, text-based chat client and server, and we wrote it in such a way that we actually don't have to use our client, we can use Telnet as a client as well.